Please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. Hello everyone and welcome back to another live stream with me, Gisela K. This is Grizzly True Crime. I am from South Africa, living in the Netherlands. If you're brand new here, I hope that you will consider subscribing and becoming part of this wonderful community, as you could see from the chat. <laughs> welcome to all my moderators, patrons, members and everyone. Are we ready for a snarktastic Friday? On this channel, we like deep dives, documents, presentations, we love body cams, interrogations, all those things, and yeah. We we love Jesse Krzyzewski's letters a little bit less. And I lost Friday. Am I like trying to jinx myself or what? I got um, Krzyzewski flu is what I called it. <laughs> because I read her 39-page letter to you for the second time. Ooh, and in those last 20 minutes of that stream, I started deteriorating rapidly. By the next day, full-blown flu. Krzyzewski flu. So guess what? I have grapefruit juice. Yes, I do. And I've even pre-recorded myself reading this. I'll be here on screen. We're going to stop and pause and make some snarky commentary. Um, we snark here. We're appropriate on this channel. Okay. When it's a dumb criminal like this, we snark. <laughs> so just a quick recap. Uh, for those of you who don't know anything about this case, this was known as the eye drop or eye drops murder trial. Uh, Jesse Kraszewski's the convicted killer. She's yet to be sentenced because of her antics. She's 39 years old and she was found guilty of murdering her friend Lynn Hernan on, so she was found guilty on November 14th of this year, okay? She was meant to be sentenced on December 7th, but we're going to get to why that didn't happen. Her next court date is January 12th of 2024. Now, what she's found guilty of and convicted of is murdering her friend Lynn Hernan after stealing all her money with eye drops, Visine. She put eye drops in, well, who knows where she actually put it in, probably everything, water, in her pudding, in her tea, all sorts of things like that. This case has been so wild. This is like, I, I mean, people say it's like Sarah Boone. I think this one is way worse than Sarah Boone. If you didn't see the trial, if you didn't watch the coverage with us, I would highly recommend checking it out. You know why? Because I defluffed it for you. It's a really great way to watch the trial. I mean, it took a lot of hours of work to do, but there was no tea breaks, paper flapping, lunch breaks, waiting around, hanging around, silent sidebars. No, no, no. We cut that all out and we watched it on a one day delay. And so we powered through it, got to see that whole trial together in the most concise, intense way. And uh, so it's all timestamped for you now and you can check it out. It's quite a wild one. So if you're only now joining and you're like, what the hell is this, this case, this trial, go check it out. Okay. And on day one and two, I did presentations for you where we did a deep dive on what the case was all about in the background and showed you lots of pictures and things. Jesse Krzyzewski, this criminal, she was a fraudster in her past. She committed a lot of fraud and forgery already. Um, so it's no surprise that she stole all of Lynn's money. And then why would she need, why would she need to kill her friend Lynn? who she knew through her mother. Well, she wanted Lynn's estate. So how would she get that? Lynn could no longer be alive. Okay, so she got her estate for some time there. Okay, so I hope that was a fairly good recap for you. If you're not too sure, there is a little write-up as well in the description box. And as I say, on day one and two of the trial coverage, I did a whole presentation for you. There's recap videos and all sorts of things. I actually want to make a whole recap video once this freaking defendant, not defendant, convicted criminal is sentenced. Now, Jesse Krzyzewski has, here's what happened, okay, in case you missed this. What happened was that on the day of her sentencing, we found out, well, we found out the day before, oh my word, there's a 39-page letter that somehow got out of the Waukesha County Jail. So this happened in Pewaukee, uh, in Waukesha County, Wisconsin, okay? Now, she's been at the Waukesha County Jail ever since, finally got to trial. She's been through six attorneys. Does it make it? Yeah, she's been through six attorneys, six or seven attorneys, <laughs> her two latest attorneys who were with her throughout the whole trial and victim blaming just as much as her. Yeah, we were not loving that. Literally withdrew because a letter somehow got out of the jail, a 39 page letter that ended up on a friend's doorstep. 
Now that's being investigated as to how and why. Her attorneys withdrew because in the letter she accused them of saying this is their idea, one of them took the letter out, one of them took the letter to the friend, big accusations, the board of uh, ethics told uh, attorney Galavis to withdraw, Donna Kuchler already withdrew, she's like I'm out, I'm done, I've got a career to protect, so now Jesse Krzyzewski has no attorneys, she still has to be assigned new attorneys, and just in case you're confused, she has to be assigned new attorneys in order for her sentencing to take place. Thank goodness it's not a mistrial. But that's what Jesse's asking for in this letter today, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> Web Weaver says for more grapefruit juice. <laughs> you see, you're thinking ahead. Thank you so much. You say, glad you're feeling better, G. You are thinking ahead. You know I'm going to need that support letter. You know it. <laughs> because last time, mm, 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 Jesse almost finished me off. Someone said it was like an energy transfer. I'm like, probably was. Freaking toxic woman, this. Amy Short, oh my word, guys, this is Lynn Hernan, the victim's family member. Thank you so much for being here. You said, she is just continuing my family's pain. We need prayers, Grizzlies. Thank you, G, for everything. Justice for Lynn. Thank you so much, Amy, and I hope that you could see this is a safe place for you. You know, I've heard from family members before that sometimes the snark that we do here is a, it's just at least a little bit helpful. It just... This is a very grim situation, a terrible, terrible thing that's happened, not only the murder, but then how this has gone. She should already be sentenced. She should already be in prison in her forever home with a new mugshot. But no, she managed to manipulate a situation which is now being investigated as to who really wrote that letter because Jesse Koshevsky says she didn't write it. She still says it, you guys, in this letter. This is 25 pages to Judge Doro, okay? So she says she didn't write it. Okay, well then who? Who wrote the letter? How did the letter get out of the jail? You know, was it an attorney? Was it a friend? Was it someone that works at the jail? Did she actually mail it and then someone else threw that envelope away? Who knows? So, Amy, uh, thank you for being here with us. I'm so sorry for not only your loss, but for the pain of this. This is terrible. So, um, the best we can do here is go over this letter and freaking snark it up gonna snark it up <laughs> all right so i hope that you guys remember i don't want to show again what jesse krzyzewski looks like right i've shown you presentations with lynn hern and the victim jesse i've made youtube shorts about it as well on both of my channels grizzly true crime and grizzly true crime shorts i'm sure you can check it out there all right <clears throat> so this letter as you can see was dated De well sorry sorry it was dated the third of December 2023, four days before her sentencing hearing. It was meant to be sentencing, but sentencing hearing, okay? And so it was stamped on December 7th of 2023. That was the day of the sentencing hearing. And why? It's because we watched that sentencing hearing and saw that Jesse was all attitude and then said to the judge, well, this is all the state's fault, okay, for this mess. And anyway, I've written you a letter and I want to give it to you. I don't trust anyone. I wasn't going to send it. And so she wrote a 25-page letter as if that isn't a red flag that she's the one who wrote the 39-page letter. No one else in, well, we don't know, but that we know of is writing this length of letters with this type of writing. Now, let's answer this question quickly, which is, this was her original 39-page letter. Well, the one that she says she didn't write. And you see this handwriting here? She wrote, Dear Jessica, because she was writing to a friend. There's the handwriting. Here's the new handwriting. There it is. There it is. To me, it looks very similar. And because I have to read it and transcribe it so that I can actually record it for you, uh, I struggled with the same way that she writes R's. Look how she writes an R. I'm reaching out. You see this R? It's hard to read some of her words sometimes, okay? So I'm saying that this writing and this writing, just by the look of it, it looks the same to me. But remember in this 39 page letter, if you actually go through it, we went through it last uh, week, Friday. So go look at that stream if you missed it. Uh, that was actually for the second time. But anyway, so look, the, the writing changes quite a bit throughout, as you could see, look there. So I don't know if her mom helped her write some, I have no idea. You know, I don't really wanna speculate like that. I'm not too sure, but um, maybe her mom is being investigated too. Who knows? I don't know. But look, look at all of this that we saw last time, okay? So, now we're going to do this. And the snark dust 
<laughs> which is what I call coughing. It's already going to happen. I can feel it. So I'm going to play my recording for you. We're going to listen. You can read along. And then I'm going to pause it while so that we could stop and make commentary, okay? So are we ready? Here we go, guys. So this was written on December 3rd of 2020. Hey, hey. Can you hear it or not? I just want to know if you can hear that clip. Tell me if you can hear this. Three in Jesse Kruszewski's sentencing hearing was on December 7th of 2023. So you can see that that's what the court stamp says as well. Okay. Okay, before I carry on, I want to know if you can hear that. Uh, just to know that my settings are right over here. <laughs> Leslie says, if she says there are threats in her peanut butter, I'll scream. Yeah, that was Letitia. That was Letitia Stach. She, had, she, <laughs> she saw threats in her peanut butter. Okay. So now let's play the, let's play this. So let's start with the letter. Judge Doro, I am reaching out to you because as of today, I am at a loss. Both of my attorneys have requested to withdrawal. <laughs> so even though they are still currently my attorneys on record, they are no. And yes, guys, she wrote, both of my attorneys have requested to withdrawal. Not to withdraw, to withdrawal. <laughs> no longer working on my case or talking with me. I'm scheduled for sentencing this week, Thursday, December 7th. Unfortunately, I don't see how that hearing can proceed as planned at this point. Attorney Kuchler was working on a sentencing packet that was to be submitted to you, but has since stopped. Per her wishes, family or friends emailed her letters. Then when she requested withdrawal, she replied to their emails, informing them and giving them attorney Galavis's information. The following day, Attorney Gullivies spoke to the ethics board before coming to see me, to also withdrawal. So now I sit in limbo. I have no one to speak to regarding my legal rights on how to proceed. I feel there are some serious issues right now, and I desperately need legal counsel, and since I still have two attorneys listed on record, nobody will speak to me or legally can. Nor do I feel I can move forward with either attorney at this point. I had planned on being sentenced and was ready to get out of Waukesha County Jail. I have had enough. Did you hear that? She's had enough, you guys. She's had enough. She was so ready to be sentenced to go straight to prison. <laughs> yeah, okay. And she's like, how dare this letter get out there? This is the state's fault. Right? Okay. Oh, man. I said it's the same writing. It's the same writing, just different size. In my opinion, her mom had to have helped her. Who else? Doubt she has a friend in the world. She. This is a stunt to delay sentencing. And it really doesn't help anything or anyone. It doesn't help her case. It's like a really dumb plan, right? Wow. The last thing I want is to delay this. But with these new developments in the past two weeks, I see there is no option. I am extremely concerned. And since the DAs have reached out to you prior to my sentencing with this information, I feel I need to, on my own behalf, pro se, since nobody is representing my interests. On Tuesday, November 28th, I was taken to the Sheriff's Department to a room with Detective Hoppy and Plenis awaiting. I said I would not agree to speak without counsel. I was told I was being investigated for fraud, showed some papers, and then told I might not be leaving for TCI as planned, then escorted back to jail, at which I was placed in a holding cell for hours per the detective's request and not allowed to use the phone. Then everyone was served dinner except me. Later, I was released back to my pod and then served dinner. I called my friend. How dare they? I mean, everyone was served dinner except her. Okay, she was in this holding cell. How inconvenient. Okay. What was this about now? What letter? She didn't write a letter. Wow. <laughs> Deb Bowmore says, Lurker coming out to say hi. Thanks for everything you do, Jean Mars. Hello, Lurker. It's so nice when Lurkers come out to say hi. If you don't know what a Lurker is, someone that's maybe just watching and they don't actually chat with us uh, so that we could see it or I could read your comments. So thank you so much for popping out. I really love it when that happens. Okay, I'm trying to put the cursor where we are just so that you can generally follow along. And Kathy McCarthy who informed me she just saw the same two detectives. They came to her house questioning her. She instructed me to call my attorneys. I called attorney Kuchler, who said she had received a call from the DA's office requesting a meeting regarding something pertaining to my sentencing. In the meantime, I was gathering more information from Kathy. 
On Thursday, November 30th, Attorney Kuchler met with the DA's office and had a 2 p.m. video visit scheduled with me. By 2.15, I proceeded to call her because she didn't show she answered her phone. I am only taking this call as a courtesy. I just put in to withdraw from your case. <laughs> just like the way that Jesse keeps writing, I just put in to withdraw from your case. So she says that Donna Kuchler answered the phone and said, I'm just taking this call as a courtesy. I just put in to withdraw from your case. I only have a year left of my career and I'm not getting involved with this. I, Brad, and the office requested to withdraw. Wow. <laughs> just a crazy Swift, he says, I can only imagine Kukla and Pablo trying to figure out how the internets work. <laughs> right? Oh, by the way, thank you so much to Grizzly Cat for getting this letter for us. Just yesterday, at the end of yesterday's stream, I was telling you guys that this letter was sealed because that's what was initially reported. Okay, but then I saw some articles, you know, people talking about, I'm like, maybe it's not sealed anymore. I don't know what happened here. But anyway, so Grizzly Cat uh, actually contacted the court clerk and managed to get this for us. I mean, I wasn't disappointed when I heard it was sealed. I was like, oh, really? Wow. Now we can't read it. But then I'm like, oh, crap. Now we have the letter. <laughs> so here we are reading through it. Okay. Uh, anyway, moving on. I only have a year left of my career and I'm not getting involved with this. I, Brad, and the office requested to withdrawal. She said her and attorney Galavis are being investigated, but that she was cleared because she hasn't come to see me in person since trial ended. I find that very interesting. Hmm? So she says that Donna Kuchler told her that her and attorney Galavis, Pablo, are being investigated but that she, Donna, was cleared because she hadn't actually gone to visit Jesse in person since the trial ended. Imagine if it's Pablo, you guys. <laughs> I'll be I'll be surprised. I'll be like, wait, what? Pablo, what were you thinking? He'll be like, what? I don't know. I just, <laughs> I don't know if it is or isn't. Don't know who took that letter out for her or if, you know, she wrote it. I think she wrote it. In my opinion, she wrote the letter, the 39-page letter, she wrote it. Okay, that's my opinion. If she had help to continue writing more of it, I don't know. They were going to have to get some jail calls to hear what she said to her mom, right? Or to a friend. So, yeah, Wildfire says, Grizzlies, get it done. Right? <laughs> so, and as I told you, Waukesha County, very, very sweet. There's a lady there called Colleen. She's very nice. But Waukesha County, they still use a fax machine, you guys. Like, I mean, like, literally a fax machine. They're faxing things back and forth. It takes a while to get these things. So, again, yeah, thank you to Grizzly Cat for helping us get this letter. She said the DA's office is saying that I was colluding with my attorney, that they told me this idea and took an envelope and dropped it off. I told her, this is insane. I didn't write anything, send anything, nor did anything with or without my attorney. She then said it's your trial notes. I said, what? She explained more. And I said, <laughs> Donna Kukla is like, um, it's your trial notes. And she's like, what? This is insane. <laughs> Miss Holmes says, grizzly true crime. Might explain Pablo's constant angry face. Well, he didn't have much to say to explain the situation at that sentencing hearing. He's like, um, yeah, no, I just, uh, I spoke to the ethics Bored and I withdrew. That's what they advised. That's what they advised. Like, oh dear. <laughs> oh no. Forensic Furious says Pablo passed it to Spiller. The rest is history. <laughs> Earth, moon, stars from South Africa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so continuing on here, we're on page three of 25. Oh yes, you guys. Mm -hmm. said that I didn't do anything. Since I was convicted, I've been going through all of my paperwork, downsizing, because you can't bring all I have to TCI. And as per my prison complaint from TCI, used as an exhibit, they took half and discarded last time I was there. Attorney Kuchler said, I don't believe you threw out paperwork from trial. Ooh, Kuchler got snarky with her. I do like that. That's a little bit of a silver lining. I mean, Donna Kuchler and Pablo Gullivis really tried their level best to defend this client. I mean, they put themselves out there for it. I don't think it was their proudest work. They really victim blamed to the next level. And uh, Jesse Groshevsky just threw them right under the bus. So with Donna Kuchler just saying, oh, yeah, I don't think uh, that you threw out paperwork from the trial. And she's like, what? Oh my God, what are you accusing me of, Donna? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, I did. 
I combined notes, discarded pages of no importance, and got rid of over half my papers, discovery, notes, etc. And I mean over at least 2,000 pages in two different parts. This jail has cameras everywhere, so someone needs to look, and I'm dead serious, this is too important. Regardless, then Attorney Kuchler again said, I'm done with this, I have a 2.30 and I'm late. I do not want to proceed with an attorney who doesn't believe me, nor even interested to have a discussion with me. Then there's a word cut off, and as you can see here, I don't know what this cut off bit says. I think it says here even uh, to have a discussion, and then it looks like with me. I don't know what this word is here. If you see it, say it. <laughs> yeah, Janet Murphy says, "Oh, she's dead serious." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead serious. She always says, I swear to God, dead serious. Okay, so whatever that word is, now we're skipping to this page over here. It continues on page 5 of 25, says, finished or mailed it. The odd parts is, yes, her name is Jessica, but I called her Jess. Kathy is another friend, but I call her May and write that too. She too saw everything and spoke to the detective, stating, by the way, I don't know if she said I call her May or like Mac. You know, you see there, it looked like May to me, but it could be part of her surname, so I don't know. Uh, anyway, sorry to interrupt there. A few pages look like my writing or similar, most not including the envelope. Another interesting fact, I threw out three of those large envelopes because they got wet and half side was sealed shut. I used one to write to Tony Kuchler a very lengthy letter after trying I want to know what that letter says. What did she write to Attorney Kuchler? Imagine that letter. And how did that letter get to Attorney Kuchler? Right? Wait, I was going to say something else here. Just wait. Everything spoke detectives. There's something else I wanted to tell you, but now I can't remember what it is. <laughs> Steel guitar says, I'm not lying about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Carrie D says, lol, gripping her pearls. <laughs> She's like, oh, what? Would you, why would you accuse me of this? <laughs> well, and I had to have a CO tape it shut. New letters. Ah, I was going to say TCI is that Tight Cheetah Correctional Institute. Uh, that's what TCI stands for. And obviously CO is a corrections officer. Or what was in them? It was about Whitnell Park. Let's talk about the biggest one. No, let's not talk about Whitnell Park. She's always talking about Whitnell Park. She said, okay, in one of her crazy, uh, one out of six, she had six police interviews without asking for an attorney, before she was arrested. And she made up so many stories, okay? One of the stories was that she can prove that Lynn took her own life because she made a little baggie with dated visine bottles and parts of a gun and some paperwork and buried it in Whitnell Park, which is the same park where she buried her bunny when her bunny died when she was a kid. And she used to go there for walks daily, and she actually, of course, the police officers have to investigate everything that is said, and so they went to the park twice, at least twice, and they even went um, taking like an iPad with and had a video call with Jessie while she was in a jail cell, and she was directing them where to go and where to dig. They dug, found nothing, okay? They found absolutely nothing, and in that 39-page letter that we looked at last week, one of the things was that she was asking her friend to recreate that little baggie. She said, forget about the gun parts and the visine, but if you just make the baggie with a cassette tape in it um, and try to act like as if you're Lynn and say how suicidal you are because uh, she wants it to stage it as if it's two days before Lynn took her own life is what she's saying. She wants her friend to record on an old cassette tape sounding like Lynn. She described what the voice should be like, like a smoker's voice, oh, raspy and all kinds of stuff, right? And she wants her to say that Lynn murdered her own mother with an overdose of Visine. And guess what? She even talks about it in this letter. So how the hell this freaking double-digit IQ criminal <laughs> thinks how she thinks that we're not going to think these, this letter was written, both were written by the same person. I mean, she's talking about the same crap. It's the same thing. Again with Whitnell Park, again saying that Lynn is a killer. She murdered her own mother with Visine, and that's why she took her own life with Visine. Like, what? Yeah, Hilaria says, who else would know that information? <laughs> yeah, so here she goes again with Whitnell Park. 
one, nobody ever took me, which makes it beyond crazy. I never asked anyone to make a tape because let's be clear, nobody can sound like Lynn and we all know her voice. I would never do this. Now, the second part, notarized letters. I went to the bank with her, Lynn, to get things notarized and every time they kept a logbook of who, date and what was being notarized. Not to mention there's things in those letters that aren't true. Some things I had just found out and things I just spoke on the phone upset about and notes of things for appeal on in discovery. One was about Lynn's mom having a will. It says she left everything to her neighbor and friend named Bonnie. I never knew anything on that. But after I was on the phone with my mom and she was talking about that, but it was Bonnie's kids. Not to mention, I don't know Lynn's mom. Never been to her house. I don't know Bonnie where she lives, who she is, or if she has kids, or any of that. There's a lot. See, that raised a red flag for me too, actually. One red flag when I read that this morning was, hmm, what if her mom did help her write this letter? Or the other one, right? She's like, I don't know who Bonnie is. Who the heck was Bonnie? Or, number two, is this a deflection of, I don't know, I think it should be investigated what the heck happened to Lynn's mom. What if she really did die from Visine? What if she really did know Jesse? Damn, then we'll have a serial poisoner here, a serial killer. Sure, and you, I don't know, I wouldn't put anything past Jessie, honestly, at this point. Sure, like, she goes far. I mean, this this one, she has, as we would say in South Africa, geen skam. That means no shame. Hier in geen skam. <laughs> wow, okay. More in those letters, that is also incorrect, but I'm not going to keep getting into that right now. The issue is, it is assumed that I wrote those which I did not. My trial ended. Those would not help me, nor am I stupid. The real things are in the park and will one day come to light. Ah, you know, it's done in the dark. It's going to come to the light. Yes, yes, Jesse. Those things that are buried in the park that no detectives could find that you asked your friend to pretend she dug up from that park. Yeah, those things will come to light one day. <laughs> but how fake it all is. But she's like, my trial ended. Those would not help me, nor am I stupid. The real things are in the park and will one day come to light. <laughs> My word. The issue at hand now is it should have never been presented to you, but it was. Now, I have two attorneys requesting to withdraw, and at this point, they can no longer represent me, nor do I want them to. Not to mention, I don't trust anyone now. The detectives, DAs, inmates, COs, this country after all this. I've had two prior inmates go to the detectives. Now I've been on TV and with all this crap with my paperwork. I would also like to be very clear on some serious issues. Those detectives have been going to the few people in my life to where people are not answering my calls. Other people's probation agents have been called. It is like the few people I have, they are trying to turn against me. Yes, Jesse, this is like um, high school and it's just these bullies. These detectives are just all against you, right? Uh, someone asked, can I write geen skam in, you know, how to spell it? So I put, put it there in chat. This one, she's got geen skam, no shame. <laughs> so she's like, they are trying to turn all these people against me and I'm not the only one who believes this. Yeah, okay, who else, Jesse? <laughs> like literally, who else? Oh, man. And I am not the only one who believes this. I feel like I am losing my mind. Every day there's more. Other people have reached out to other friends saying things. One of the state's witnesses who actually is friends with Jessica, who the letter was supposedly written to. <laughs> supposedly, but earlier she talks about, you know, I called her Jess. Okay, you just referred to it earlier, Jesse. So Kathy has his plot twist. Jesse has DID, dissociative identity disorder, and her alters wrote the letters. Call in Dr. Lewis, everyone. Call in Dr. Lewis. She'll be on this case. <laughs> oh, man. This same state witness has three pending cases that I couldn't talk about, yet I'm under investigation. Not charged, but the DA's e-filed the information to you a week prior to my sentencing. This makes no sense. Sorry, but this is a setup. I just don't know for sure by who or why, but I think it stinks. And at this point, I need legal counsel because this is all wrong. This country is corrupt, biased, and I've had enough. 
She's like, this country is in is corrupt, bias, and I've had enough. Like, no, Jesse, that's you. Corrupt, criminal, killer, poisoner, fraudster, thief. <laughs> She's just like, yeah, no, this country, no, it's just corrupt, bias, and I've had enough. Okay, then. This should have never been given to you, and I'm requesting a mistrial. Then, with both attorneys, they each have a completely different story of all this. Also, it should be noted, per CCAP, you said... I was to receive a copy of the motion at the jail no later than 4 p.m. on Friday, December 1st, which, as of me writing to you on December 3rd, I have yet to receive. I'm at a complete loss right now. I don't know what I'm going to do or how to move forward. Since I'm writing you on these new developments, I'll figure it as good as any time I put out all issues. And they are a lot. <laughs> now, guys, get ready. For 16 issues that Jesse Krzyzewski is going to raise with Judge Dora now. In a bitchy tone too. Just like Judge Dora. I do not agree with it. Like, wow. Sure, her ego is like, oh man, it's off the charts. I don't know who the hell she thinks she is. Man. Okay. Rolien Schoenraad said it's actually geen skamte. I don't know what I said now. Now I'm confused. Is that Dutch or Afrikaans? Geen <laughs> skamte. No, I'm, now my brain is like, okay, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Geen skamte. Remember, I'm a Soti, you guys. If you're South African, you know. A Soti means, in South Africa, there's a lot of English people, a lot of Afrikaans people, and lots of many other languages, right? Many national languages. And so the thing is, I'm, I was born and raised English, not Afrikaans. Yeah. So I don't speak Dutch when I'm here as well. I'm learning a little bit. But I also never leave the house, so <laughs> I really just need to ask for a receipt in the grocery store. Daisy Love says, I wish I could have seen Judge Dora's face when she read this letter. Snark time. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, to be a fly on that wall. Like, oh, no, here we go. Here we go. I wonder if she even read all of it. Probably. I think she would have, right? Okay. So are we now ready for 16 <laughs> numbered points? One. We weren't allowed to properly put up my defense because we couldn't bring up Lynn's drinking, which was wrong. At our second to last witness, you excused the jury when the defense was done questioning the witness. You explained during the current witness, Dr. Thomas's testimony, that due to Lynn having fatty tissue liver, also known as hepatic statosis, which was noted in the original autopsy protocol done by the ME, Linda Bedritsky, enlisted as an other significant condition of her death. You explained that we were not allowed to discuss her drinking or being an alcoholic, but later you changed that during Dr. Thomas's testimony because one is a doctor making a medical diagnosis and she was not... Well, so actually because she is a doctor making a medical diagnosis, yeah? Dr. Thomas at the original hearing, Daubert, where it would have been decided. The issue with your ruling and change of decision, it was too late. And due to that, the original doctor ruled the same conclusion. It was not new information. This was a big part of our defense that you ruled on and later changed. But your ruling and reason don't make sense because of Dr. Bedrisky's report from the beginning. It was a gross mistake on your part and played a huge part not adequately being able to put on a proper defense. Yes, you changed your ruling, but it was at the end of a three-week trial. We had already went through all witnesses from the state and on the last two for the defense. Number oh my goodness. <laughs> Can you believe how she speaks to Judge Doro? The way that she's like, you know what you did? Yeah, I don't agree with that at all. Sorry, I'm just trying to... There we go. Okay. Yeah, Danny Dorn says, of course she'll say judge bias. <laughs> Kerry says, so because Dr. Thomas' defense doctor brought your stuff, she shouldn't judge Dora allowed it, so that was in your favor, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, but she's like, you know what? I don't agree with how you ruled on those issues. Like, Jesse, sit down. But two, you would not allow us to discuss or bring up Lynn's mom's death. This was extremely detrimental to my defense 
And again, this isn't a small charge. We are talking about a charge that causes a life sentence and her mom's death, who was one of the main issues Lynn committed suicide. And it was Okay, so and her mom's death was one of the main issues Lynn committed suicide. And it was in her own letter, which was admitted and accepted as an exhibit and published. Yeah, who wrote that letter, Jesse? Who wrote the letter? I would speculate you, professional forger and fraudster and bragger that you're good at making these fake documents. Right? In her own letter, which was admitted, accepted as an exhibit and published, you stopped us and a sidebar was called from questioning Detective Hoppy, who was the one who looked into Lynn's mom's death by requesting and subpoenaing records. The first records received only further raised more questions as additional medical records were requested. There is where I don't know if they ever got those second records, and if so, they weren't ever turned over, or they never received them. And if so, why weren't they followed up on? It is extremely concerning, because Lynn explained that she was haunted by what she did. Explained why and what she did. Mm, yeah, Jesse, you made up letters to explain some absolute terrible victim-blaming stuff. Sure, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Debbie says, um, Judge Dora has way too much patience. Jesse's neck and neck with Daryl Brooks. Lol, I know, right? <laughs> also, by the way, she's not allowed to talk to the media anymore. There was a... It's like a gag order. Jesse's under a gag order. There's a, There was like a... I don't think it's a motion that was filed. I don't know what to call it. Something was filed where Judge Doro said that Jesse Kraszewski may no longer talk to the media. So just in case you're wondering if she's, well, who knows if she's going to follow that or not or what the consequences will be if she doesn't, you know, if the media contacts her, what will she do? Will she say, oh, well, I can't talk to the media or will they just not put it through, you know, or whoever phones through? I don't know, but she's not actually allowed to. Yes. Lynn said she spiked her mom's tea with Visine two days before she died. Those medical records obtained state her mom was taken to the hospital after a fall and died two days later, yet the mom didn't remember or know what happened. Then, going a step further, Lynn said something on her mom's will, her mom was going to change and remove her, yet her mom died without a will. Considering even the cousin, John Fryatt, said another family member would have probably handled Lynn's will since he did the mom's, yet he didn't handle either estates. Lynn hired the same law firm for her mom's and hers. Another issue with all that Lynn had, all this money after her mom died, over $500,000, yet her mom had no life insurance, and she got a little under $140,000 from her mom's estate. Again, Lynn's letter said things. She was taking money, and again, I know the BMO bank records would show this, so she accuses Lynn of committing the very crimes that Jesse has been found guilty of. She says Lynn po poisoned her own mom with Visine and took her own mom's money. No, Jesse, you took all of Lynn's money, the inheritance from her mom, and then you poisoned Lynn with Visine. She really needs a mirror, okay? She really needs to look into that mirror. It's you, Jesse, talk to yourself. <laughs> I would also like to note. I was incarcerated when Lynn's mom died. These records, again, were requested by the detectives. There was information that matched her letters, very odd suspicions raised, and yet you would not allow us to bring any of this up? And this was why the deceased struggled and why she took her life, and she said it. Mm, yeah, okay, Jesse. Daisy Lab said, she is such a dummy. She's sharing the same thing. <laughs> I know, right? She's sharing the same thing. That's in a 39-page letter. And she's like, mm, I didn't write it. But here she is, sharing all the same stories. Yeah, Baker Kanner says, this criminal is one of the most toxic people I've ever heard of. That's why I got Kershevsky flu. And it's very bad. You guys, <laughs> Kershevsky flu is intense. <laughs> I lost my voice. I was in bed. I was like, am I going to make it? <laughs> it was really hectic. Oh, my word. So don't get it. Hope you guys don't get Kershevsky flu. Wouldn't wish it on anyone. It's from the toxicity of these letters. It really makes you sick. I mean, <laughs> I do get very frustrated, very snarky, and feel very sick reading her letters. Like, come on. 
Oh, I can't wait to see sentencing. And who knows how long that will take. Her next court date is January 12th. And that's like a case management hearing. And she'll have new attorneys assigned to her to see her through the sentencing phase. And she's going to probably make them work so hard. Shame. <laughs> and sentencing could be, what, summer of 2024? Oh, man. Three. Detective Hoppy and Detective Loberg both committed perjury. Both signed affidavits requesting records, and on those affidavits, number three states, Lynn, sitting upright in a chair, located in the living room of the residence, along with several pills placed on a plate that was resting on Lynn's chest or stomach area. In addition, there were crushed pills and a spoon on a plate, along with pill residue on Lynn's mouth and nose. I remembered over and over, both, as with many others stated that plate was on an end table nearby, as they said staged. So she's literally saying the detectives committed perjury on the witness stand because they said that the plate was on Lynn and not on a nearby side table. She's like, ha, got you there. These killers studying their own crime scene, seeing where they messed up and also seeing, well, where did someone else mess up? Did they say anything wrong out of line anywhere? I put that plate on the nearby table, okay? She's very adamant about it, isn't she? Bratty Babs Love says, as always, thanks, G. Thank you so much. And also, if you're only joining now, you guys, happy Friday to you. We're having a snarky Friday looking at Jesse Krzyzewski's latest letter to Judge Doro, which for a time I thought was sealed. They said it's not going to be released, but here we are. We've got it. We got it. Okay, so that's what we're now looking at. We on, <laughs> we, we're not even halfway yet. Almost. I would love to print out those affidavits to enclose, but I can't print them. But I would bring my election discovery to court if you request. Those affidavits are electronic discovery. Amazing how by the third or fourth time I'm reading it now, I see the words better. I would like to, I would bring my electronic discovery to court if you request. So I only have because some of my financials that were requested, they enclosed the affidavits and subpoenaed documents. Thank God. I knew this and fought over and over. They took the stand and lied. What is rather interesting, those affidavits start in 2019 to 2021 and things change and are changed by date but they don't make sense. They change the story to fit their needs. They aren't accurate or true. I don't want to fully explain because again, I don't trust them right now. Uh, yeah, again, mirror, Jesse, mirror. That's what you need. They change the story to fit their needs. That's you, Jesse. That's all you. <laughs> it's not Detective Hoppy or the, it's you. She needs to look in that plastic mirror in a little uh, pod, as she calls it, her jail cell. Look in it. Stare deep into it <laughs> and uh, just realize it's all you, lady. You're projecting big time and it's not helping her case at all. Sure. But they change their language and dates of Visine, THZ, lethal, cause and manner of death and much more. Number four, missing discovery. When you upload photos, they automatically number the photos. When I looked at all three sets of photos from the scene, plus all the others later when arrested, it's odd. The two sets taken at the scene, except the medical assistants, are missing photos. Why and where are they? They start at, and there's a whole lot of numbers that Jesse lists here, but these are missing between, and then she lists the missing ones as well, next set start at, but these are missing in between. Number five. Man, she has very little to go on. And she's like, you know what? They don't get where the plate was. They didn't say it right at trial. And also some of these photos are missing from the discovery file. Because now it's almost as if she thinks she's an attorney now. You can actually see what a chameleon she is when it comes to learning the lingo, terminology, manipulating. She's a really great manipulator. Well, I wouldn't say she's great. I'm sure she's been good at her whole life manipulating people, right? But you could see how she absorbs information like she did throughout the trial and she was writing notes and things. And now she's like, Pretending to be a lawyer, you know? Wow. Oh no. Shauna, you too? You said I've had it for 10 days. <laughs> Freaking Kershevsky. Yeah, I've had it for seven days. Kershevsky <laughs> flu is really the worst. It's terrible. Okay. Um, so if you guys are only joining now and you missed where I compared the handwriting, 
This was the 39 page letter. This was the letter she wrote to a friend. Okay. This was that letter. And this is the letter now. So not only is the content very similar, but the handwriting is similar. I mean, just look at the, the way she writes the J's. Look at the way she writes the R's. Those are dead giveaways as well. And then the language, like I'm in limbo or like dead serious or swear to God or, you know, not a dime or all these. She's got little things that she says and she says it in this letter and she says it in her latest letter as well. But she claims to not have written the first one. Right? Yeah, yeah. Kim Watts says, I call people like Jesse changelings. They change their actions and behavior to see people around them. John Kelly, criminal pro uh, profiler, calls them evil chameleons. <laughs> there was a lot of discovery used in trial by the state that was never turned over or they requested additional information and it wasn't turned over to the defense. Other acts. We were not allowed to discuss Lynn's prior incarceration on drug usage, which again played a huge part of my defense and part of Lynn's issues leading to her death. Lynn went to prison back in 2007 for a DUI. She went in as her former self, lost her dad while incarcerated, and she changed. She started using prescriptions there and came out addicted and a totally different person. This is when she first got disability. She isolated herself and withdrew. James Kelleher said in one of his... James Kelleher was Lynn Hernan's ex-boyfriend, and he was also on the stand. They remained lifelong friends. They dated for quite a long time, and then they broke up, but stayed friends, and he had a new girlfriend, and she was also friends with Lynn. So she's um, saying things about James here as well. Kathy Four says, what are the symptoms of the Kershevsky flu? Fever, a pounding headache for days. You lose your voice. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> it just feels really toxic. Okay. So we're continuing here for where she said, she says that Lynn got a DUI. That is apparently true. She did get a DUI and she went to jail, but she's like, she went to prison. She got this DUI. She came out a different person. And then she was this addict of prescription pills. And that's when she first got disability. She isolated herself with the two. James Keller has said in one of his interviews that they broke up because of this DUI in prison because she couldn't get her shit together. Okay, and that is also how Jesse talks. So we're going to hear the recording of that now. Tom, it's nice to see you in chat. You said, hope everyone's having a great Friday. I hope so too. I hope everyone's having a great Friday. Thank you for spending some time here with me. I start a little bit earlier today because you know some of you might be listening at work with your AirPods in. Hello to you. These <laughs> interviews that they broke up because of this DUI and prison because she couldn't get her shit together. But then on the stand said that he worked too much. All of her so-called friends knew she was a big drinker. They all drank with her. But again, we couldn't ask that. Oh, you wanted to victim blame even more. It was so disgusting how much. Jesse and her defense team victim blamed, you know, even the way Donna Kuchler was like, you know, Lynn liked her little pills. She liked her, her drinking. She liked to drink. You know what I mean? The way that they said it was just so distasteful. It was horrible. I know they had very little to go on to defend this client, but I just think there's got to be better strategies, man, than just pure victim blaming all day long. Anyway, but uh, Jesse is still complaining about, we couldn't even ask that. Well, you brought it up. You tried to bring it up multiple times, her defense team. But she's like, oh, we really wanted to go much further with Lynn being a drinker and addicted to pres prescription pills and drugs and then also like murdering her mom. I mean, is she insane? Who Judge Doro is not going to like this. Mm -mm. Six, the cousin, John Fryatt. Everyone says this didn't matter. He was a former DA for here, Washington and Jefferson counties, plus an Eastern District DA too. He had no relationship with Lynn. He called the Emmy's office after reading her obituary. He was given my name and number. So the medical examiner's office, the Emmy's office. And yes, we're on point six out of 16, you guys. <laughs> if you're only joining now, welcome. This is about the eye drop murder trial where sentencing has been delayed by several months, probably. Jesse Kraszewski was found guilty on November 14th of 2023 of murdering her 62-year-old friend, Lynn Hernan, by poisoning her with eye drops, with Visine, okay? And also, before that, stealing all her money. So she had three charges, she was found guilty on all of them, and she was set to be sentenced on December 7th. 
but that became a sentencing hearing because this 39 page letter surfaced, there's accusations in there about her attorneys, then her attorneys withdrew. So it became a whole thing. Like now it's a whole investigation into the letter and the attorneys and everything while she's being assigned new defense attorneys to prepare for sentencing. Yeah, it's just terrible, right? Let's hope she doesn't escape. I hope the Waukesha County Jail is very, very secure. Let's not have a Danilo Cavalcante situation. Because <laughs> with Jesse, you just never know. <laughs> Rob says, love the snarky stream, G. Perfect for a Friday, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. He didn't call me. He CCAP'd me. After he saw my prior 2010 convictions, he called back. He called probate court and also personally went to the Emmy's office and called the sheriff's department too. He said it's odd her heir has a record. He and also, I think she's saying this because people found it quite odd. It was brought up before the trial and during the trial that Jesse would try to control the situation so much and fish for information with Lynn's autopsy. And like, so what did she die from? What was it? What does the toxicology show? And she called the sheriff's department a lot. She called the medical examiner's office a lot. They found that to be quite the red flag. So now she's like, what? They also did. <laughs> like she's putting herself on the same level as all the detectives. She said, they also, Kay and this freaking cousin, they also called. Yeah, but Jesse, again, Mira, you're the red flag in the room. Big, big red flag. He said it doesn't pass the smell test. The detectives went to speak to him. He said he didn't know Lynn or have a relationship with her, knew she was a drink drug user and had goofy friends. He said he likes working with you guys to the detectives. They were all laughing and joking together. Detective Cole said that he called around to ask about him. Detective Cole said to John, next time you see Eric Stevenson, tell him we need raises. Again, don't forget you owe me a favor. Give him my name personally. Tell him that we need early retirement. This is completely inappropriate. They were there to talk about his cousin's death and they are joking and laughing. And what does he owe him a favor for? Framing me? Setting me up for his cousin that committed suicide? Yes, Jesse, everybody's there to frame you. Everyone just wants to just conspire against you and frame you. She's sounding very paranoid right now. You know, she might need a mental health evaluation. I think that's due. Send in Dr. Lewis. <laughs> that's from Letitia Staff's trial. Oh man, imagine that. No, 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 no. Never a mistrial, never a retrial. Please, can we just get to sentencing? And can Jesse Krzyzewski just be sentenced? Hopefully life without parole and off you go. She will appeal immediately. She's already asking for a mistrial many times throughout this letter. But <laughs> she's like, and then Lynn, he's, she had this cousin and he's a DA. And then he was basically like patting all these cops on the back and being like, and it's so funny how she actually botches it because she says, look how she writes it. He said, he likes working with you guys. So instead of he said, I like working with you guys. She writes it in third person <laughs> as if she's writing a novel. She's like, okay, he said he likes working with you guys to the detective. They were all laughing and joking together. Detective Cole said he called around to ask about him. Detective Cole said to John, next time you see Eric, tell him we need raises. Again, don't forget, you owe me a favor. Give him my name personally. Tell him that we need early retirement. Oh, and Jesse's like, oh, how dare they? How dare this cousin and these detectives pat each other on the back like that and they're all conspiring against me yeah this is all a setup right my goodness uh tom says where in what case is the sorry i'm late it's from uh, pewaukee county wisconsin it happened on october 3rd of 2018 where 62 year old lynn hernan was found dead in her recliner seat in her home but yet covered in pills like crushed pills and things so it looked like an overdose you know like a suicide that's what detectives initially thought when they saw it, but then they're like, what? They did the, they did an autopsy because everything was a little strange. And then they find out, whoa, she died from visine poisoning, tetrahydrosoline, THZ. Okay. And that's when they're like, this is a homicide investigation now. So Jesse Koshevsky was then arrested in 2019, July of 2019. In the meantime, she'd sold off all of Lynn's stuff. She'd killed her cats as well. She had them put down. One at least. I don't know what happened to the other one. And she'd made up a lot of stories. She'd made up that she was poisoned with Visine in January of 2019 to her boyfriend. There's a lot. This case is a lot. Okay, so if you have never heard of it, I hope you'll check out the playlist. It's called the I Drop Murder Trial playlist. 
there's a lot to catch up on there, but it's all timestamped for you and it's very concise. We, we powered through without tea breaks, lunch breaks, all of that stuff. Okay, so let's continue with the letter here. With this, Dr. B says she didn't know him, talk to him, etc. They worked here the same year, so I doubt that. Plus, he called and was in person at the Emmy's office. He's on the same team with the detectives, as he said. So if he thinks I'm responsible based off of CCAP, they were going to pursue me then. If I'm honest, even with him no longer here, employed, it still matters. I should have had a change of venue, even more so with all that's happened. Then add James Kelleher and Anthony Poser, who also have friends here and both repeatedly talked with sheriffs, Emmy and judges behind the scenes over and over. James kept changing his story each interview the more information he got. I think she's really just trying to protect her, what she thinks is her, the way she's perceived in the public eye. So it's like a, a little bit of narcissism, right? She's trying to <laughs> improve that. Either of how Judge Doro sees her or definitely how the public would see her. Probably knowing this letter would get out and we'd probably be reading it and looking at it and be like, what the hell? But uh, there again, she seems very like she has this guilty conscience about doing those weird things, those red flag things. Those are her mistakes, of course, phoning the sheriff's department the whole time, phoning the medical examiner's office and fishing the whole time. So what does it say? Why did Lynn die? What exactly caused her to die? What is it? What is it? What is it? You know, all of that. So to say that and keep on saying, but now look, 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 uh, James Keller also did it. Anthony Poser also did it. Anthony Poser was Lynn's friend, Corrine's son, and she... Lynn was very close to Anthony. Anthony visited a lot. We saw him in the courtroom quite a bit as well. Um, he said in one of the other chats that he, <laughs> he he loves all of us here, the Grizzlies. So that was nice to see as well. I don't know if you're lurking, Anthony, if you are, hello. And so we just want to show the family and friends lots of support. I know these letters are horrible. But we're looking at it and it's just... What a dumbass Jesse is. What a dumbass. I can't wait for sentencing. Can't wait for justice to be served because now it's been delayed with all these antics, right? Okay, so look, they say James kept changing his story. Each interview, the more information he got. Again, mirror, you don't want to say it. Just look in the mirror, Jesse. Look in the mirror. Seven. Every person who took the stand lied versus their interviews. Just one to note, Corinne Poser, about the $50,000 in the lockbox and being removed by Lynn, she said it three times in her interviews, yet on the stand she didn't remember. But when asked to replay her interview, you wouldn't allow it. Then the state recrossed and went right back to the lockbox, which reopened the door to play her interview. But you stopped Attorney Gullivies when he tried to bring it up and excused her from the stand. It's been five years, yes, but these people were interviewed and seconded and everybody lied. Recorded. I think it says and recorded. You see her freaking R. Look at that R. Oh my goodness. And that's how you know the other letter... She also wrote that, you know, she also wrote that other letter because her R's are the same. I was always like, wait, what's up with these R's? <laughs> anyway, so she said um, and recorded and everyone lied on at least one thing on the stand versus their interviews. On at least one thing on the stand versus their interview. Number eight. Now I want to point out something that I can't let go. On 11-2-2018, the first toxicology test came back. Yet the investigation wasn't reopened till January 2019 after John and James repeatedly calling and going into the Emmy's office and sheriff's department. Based off of my prior record, some financials were requested in March of 2019. Also in brackets on top, it says, yet never send pills in stomach for testing. Why? It's like Jesse is now a lawyer and investigator. Basically a YouTuber without a YouTube channel, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this feels like that uh it feels like drama the crime drama you know when it's like okay okay why was this not happening and what happened over there and i'm holding you accountable for that and this is sus and i'm like jesse come on man <laughs> a second lab done expanded testing on 3 12 2019 my mom and i came in the end of march to speak to the detectives on 5 15 2019 the pill fragments were sent for testing on 6 11 19, the third toxicology test was done. I was arrested on 7 9 2019 for this and placed on a PO hold. The last toxicology test was done on 8 7 2019. The 
she sure remembers those dates, which again is a dead giveaway of how many times she called the toxicologist, you know, the medical examiner's office, she called the sheriff's department. She was basically running the investigation to try to figure out how many steps ahead she was of them. Well, not much. Not what much. Uh, Kat says, when is her next court date? January 12th of 2024. January 12th. In the Delphi case, January 18th, important date, Supreme Court date of Indiana. There's a lot happening in January. Yes, indeed. Isn't Donna also um, Adelson? I think she's in court in January as well. I think that's on the 9th. So yeah, we've got a busy schedule. Make sure you subscribe, okay? Make all your notifications on, set it to all, so that you don't miss out. Because we have a lot. <laughs> We've got a lot of work to do, you guys. Last conversation, Dr. Sherry K from NMS and Dr. B on THZ was 3 19 The other tests were on other medications. On 9 2019 Detective Hoppy emailed Dr. B. He didn't do the reports from my interrogations, but gave her bullet points of what I said, and these would be in reports later. <laughs> he gave her a bullet point. Remember from the first letter? I wonder if Jesse watches any of this stuff from her cell. She didn't mention grisly true crime <laughs> in her plan for her friend to contact all these media outlets. We were not mentioned, you guys. <laughs> She's like, leave those grizzlies alone. <laughs> and the court clerk, she kn she knew who we were, guys. <laughs> it's like, wait, grizzly true crime? Grizzly true crime, okay. <laughs> cool, hi. <laughs> so, um, what was the point here? Sorry, it took so long. Wait, what was I saying? Oh, bullet points. Oh, in the last stream about her letter, <laughs> we were talking about um, her lacking bullet points. And in general, just so long-winded. So now she's numbered. Okay, she's made a numbered list and she's talking here yeah, about this detective giving her bullet points of what I said. And these would be in reports later. He was sorry it took so long to get back to her. What was the email conversation prior that he's returning? 9-27-2019. Cause and manner of death was determined. My revocation hearing was on 9 30, 2019. None of it is sitting right with me. <laughs> Just when she doesn't know what else to say, none of it is sitting right with me. This is sus. <laughs> it's like, Jesse, why are you trying to investigate? Because you're the one being investigated. Oh, good. For more fraud. For even more fraud. For this letter and. Oh, my word. <laughs> and she's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm busy investigating. Detective Hoppy pushed this case from the beginning. Number nine, Jean Tunnell, Lynn's neighbor and a defense witness, got off the stand. And when she was walking in front of the jurors, she gave a thumbs up to the state table and then went and sat and talked with Anthony and his family. She didn't know them when Lynn was alive, meaning they reached out prior to trial. Yet I couldn't because I had a protective order. Uh, you couldn't because you're the killer. Oh. <laughs> but she's like, oh my word, the nerve. Jean Tunnell, the neighbor. She was on the stand. She got off that stand. Gave a thumbs up, okay, to the state's table. And then she walked over and sat next to Anthony Poser. And they didn't know each other before. Like, hello. <laughs> well, they do now because uh, you brought them all together. Because no one knew there was a freaking killer right there. Wow. <laughs> Number 10. My mother couldn't testify. We talked daily during trial. I didn't know we couldn't. It's my mom. We talked daily. Anthony was there daily with his dad and they went home daily to Corrine like they didn't talk. That was a huge blow to my defense and I believe she should have went on the stand for you to decide. Okay, so it feels like sibling rivalry is the vibe I'm getting from Jesse now. When there's no si Anthony's not a sibling, but you know what I mean. It's like, but Anthony got to talk with his dad every day. Got to talk to his mom. I mean, I want to talk to my mom. I talk to her every day. Why couldn't she take the stand? <laughs> Number eleven. In my discovery, where all my phone calls in jail, including attorney calls, were in record, those aren't to be recorded. They were, and in discovery, and it clearly states the law firm and attorney name. Our whole call, and I was discussing my whole case, evidence and all. <laughs> and that is, of course, recorded. Jail calls are. Does anyone know how in the heck Jennifer Flower, Jesse's mother, avoided having to be on the stand? 
Like, why is that? Why didn't she have to be on the stand? Because I still don't know the answer to that. I don't know why, but she wasn't on the stand. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Daddy Dawn says, lol, Mrs. G, perfect the way you just said. Sounding like a child, Jesse. She's sounding like a like a jealous toddler. They got more sweeties than me. <laughs> That's how it's coming across there. She's like, but Anthony got to talk to his dad. I want to talk to my mom. Okay. Number 12. Why wasn't I ever taken to the park for evidence? I don't understand why. Number 13. These are some comments you personally made. Jesse, you were taken to the park on an electronic device. She was in a jail cell. They didn't take her out because they're scared she's obviously going to escape or attack someone or who knows what she'll do. So they did take her along virtually to Whitnell Park and asked her to direct them of where to dig and where they said they, that she should, where she said this is where you should dig. They dug and they didn't find anything. And she's like, what? Like, where's that little baggie of evidence? And I still don't get how she thinks it's going to help her case. A little baggie with like, dated visine bottles and parts of a gun and then a cassette tape that supposedly sounds like Lynn, but she knows it's not there because in her 39 page letter, she wants her friend to recreate that stuff. Yeah. To make a tape to sound like Lynn. Oh, wow. Sue Whitfield says prosecution didn't need her testimony. Defense was afraid she'd make the case worse. <laughs> Probably that says Sue Whitfield. You say in my honest opinion, right? Showing bias on your own opinion that I feel was inappropriate. When the state requested a protective order, you stated you believed I was writing the media looking for sympathy. When our pod was on cons lockdown, I requested I be present on a phone at the CEO's desk. You said I lied after speaking with the CEO when I was brought to court. You said multiple times my attorneys had to speak to the jail about discovery, yet they weren't. So I went to you. It doesn't she's speaking to Judge Doro now. The tone has changed her. She's now like scolding Judge Doro. I'm sure that's going to work out really well for her. Marilise says, but Anthony got butter for his bread, but I didn't. Marilise, don't make Rex Human jealous now. He wants to know <laughs> who gets butter on their bread, okay? The jail lied to you. I have online requests to prove I wrote and asked multiple times. Deputy jail administrators lied, not me just as she did about other inmates and clothing in this jail. I knew first... What, what, do you, what do you guys think this word is here? It says, just as she did about... I said other, but I don't know what this word is, but something inmates and clothing in this jail. <laughs> Denny Dawn, huh? Disrespecting the judge much? A little bit. <laughs> Rob says, hopefully this is the last letter from this manipulator. I think so. I think it's going to be so many more. I worry about it. It's like Sarah Boone. Yeah, she's going to write quite a lot, I'm sure. Turn on. I wouldn't have said, yet you said I was wrong. I've had a lot of issues being here, and my discovery was a big one. It took me over two years before I finally got approved a second locked bin for discovery paperwork. So wrong. Since two inmates turned against me, and I am in an open pod where paperwork wasn't all locked up because I didn't have room for it all. Then I have electronic discovery that isn't allowed to stay in my possession so anyone, staff, could look at it. I've also went through six attorneys and it's really hard to speak on discovery because I can't print any of it. I can't bring my drive to see that. Guys, she also went through six attorneys. <laughs> the way she says, I also went through. I've also went through six attorneys. Yeah, also, I'm also, I know she's adding to the situation, but also is like Sarah Boone. <laughs> oh man, six attorneys. I've also went through six attorneys and it's really hard to speak on discovery because I can't print any of it. Video visits, I can't show them things on a computer, no access. So it was very frustrating. Court worked best, but never time prior to trial. I only saw attorney Kuchler three times. Or so we're over here now. That is probably the word. Kraken Studio cracked it. You said uh, Huber, Huber in inmates is workers while incarcerated. That's probably what she wrote there. H U B R, Huber, Huber inmates. Okay, I didn't know that. Workers while incarcerated. Okay. Spoke to her only in court, besides for those three visits. Attorney Gullivies did visit, but at trial I watched very frustrated. I was not happy with my trial or my defense. There was a lot missed and also a lot that we were not allowed to talk about. I was not allowed a proper defense 
or to put it out. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to give a one star review. This service was just not up to standard. I was not happy with my trial or my defense. Like literally no one asked you. Jesse, no one asked for, you know, <laughs> a pre-sentencing because it's still going to happen. The sentencing review. No one cares about that right now. <laughs> She's like, mm -mm, now it's not happy. And way to throw your attorneys under the bus. Number 14. The state edited my interviews, yet they missed things. It was out. How was a felon and so was Lynn. Of course they edit edited it. There were six interviews that Jesse Krzyzewski did before she was arrested without an attorney. She didn't ask for one when they say, whoa, are you asking for one? She's like, nope, not asking for an attorney now. Just want to talk to you. Just want to talk. And for six police interviews. Oh my word, she made up so many different stories each time. She changed and shifted her story each time and it got crazier and crazier. We saw snippets of it. Imagine seeing the entire thing. Oh man. <laughs> Bai says, G has the perfect voice for audiobooks. Oh, thank you. I hope you've heard my audiobooks. They are available on Amazon and everywhere that you get audiobooks <laughs> from those four serial killer books I wrote, which I think I've come a long way since then, actually. I think even the quality of everything, the details, the bullet points has improved even more, right? I think, I think if you do buy them, I think my presentations these days might just kick their ass. <laughs> but there are audiobooks available if you've never heard them. And there are also podcast episodes available on Patreon. Okay, so is anyone feeling the flu yet? I hope not. <laughs> Number 15. The morning of the verdict, hours before, there were whispers overheard by my mom by two detectives in the elevator about how they got pictures behind the scenes of me in shackles that they weren't to have but got, as well as talk of a guilty verdict that morning two hours prior to a verdict. Yeah, there was talk of that already, Jesse, throughout your trial. <laughs> Out there, even in the Netherlands, Australia, Hong Kong, everywhere, all over the world, people were whispering, whispering, saying, whoo this one mm -mm, she guilty <laughs> right and she's like no there were whispers there and then they said they had pictures of me in shackles that they weren't to have but god i mean yeah i don't think anybody i think it's not like top dollar pictures you know what i mean no one wants it no jesse no one wants it <laughs> she's like yeah they've got pictures of me in my shackles number 16 now with all happening i strongly believe that this county is setting me up this seems like a big conspiracy I no longer trust anyone, inmates, staff, COs, detectives, sheriff's department, DA's office, even you. Be you don't trust yourself, Jesse. Your plan failed. <laughs> Woody Deason says, so this is a 22-page letter explaining how she didn't write a 29-page letter? Almost, Woody. This is a 25-page letter explaining how she didn't write a 39-page letter, but yet the content is very much the same. The writing is extremely similar. <laughs> it's like, right. Because I'm paranoid and I believe I should never have been in this county. I can't get a fair nothing here. I'm afraid to do much of anything here because I trust no one. There's cameras everywhere. I want to know who took my paperwork. I want to know where did this envelope come from. I want my only visit with attorney Gullivese on November 17th camera checked. I gave him nothing. I also want that camera checked. <laughs> oh dear. So attorney, who visited Jesse between November 14th of 2023 when the verdict came in and she was found guilty and December 7th when it was a sentencing hearing? Let's just have a look at, remind ourselves when this letter was written, the 22nd of November. This letter said, dear Jessica to a friend called Jessica, same name, Jesse Kroshevsky and her friend Jessica. Okay, so she wrote this letter and she dates it at 11.22, so 22nd of November. And she says here that Attorney Galavis visited her on November 17th. So I wonder if she dated it ahead or if someone else. That means, you know what I mean? Who else, who else was there? <laughs> who could have sent that letter out or taken it out or whatever it is? That's being investigated. Hopefully we'll find out on January 12th. January 12th of 2024. If they've, you know, what they've found in the investigation, because they're busy literally looking into it as we speak. Okay. I want video of the sheriff's office who dropped off this envelope. I want my electronic discovery in my possession at all times. 
I need your permission for this. You need to understand. I feel like I'm losing my mind every day. It's something. The longer I'm around people who know my case thanks to TV, I'm a target. I want to be able to bring my discovery drive to court to show you what I can't print or get permission to print in jail. It's important. I don't even trust send my letter for you right now because of all of this. I really... Sometimes she reverts to speaking like a robot. Even there, she's like, I don't even trust send my letter for you. Okay. Can't take much more. And I will fully keep fighting because what's happened, what's new and all is not okay. I need legal advice. I need new representation because I am requesting a mistrial. I also did finally get Attorney Kuchler's motion on Sunday, December 3rd at 3.37 p.m. So you know. One more note per CCAP, my count number two, it is listed 943.201A. Theft, movable property, more than $100,000 felony C. It was actually to be a felony F, not C, but per the jury, it should be A, Y, the same as count number three. Okay, so Jesse, the goody two shoes now all of a sudden he's like, you know what? I saw there was a typo and I just wanted to point that out to you. They got my count wrong. So therefore, mistrial. <laughs> she's just trying to find any tiny little error. And she's like, mistrial. Also, Kerry said they are doing a psychiatric assessment as part of the pre presentence. Pre-sentence, there we go. The pre-sentence investigation order. Okay. Very interesting. And what do you think they'll find, guys? Sure. This one is a handful. <laughs> let's hope it's not something. Let's hope they find, I don't know what, arrogance, narcissism, <laughs> profound narcissism. I don't know what they'll find. We shall see. But hopefully on January 12th, we'll find out more. If they're streaming it, we'll be there for it, of course. I was surprised to see a C, so I wanted to tell you. So, with all that's now happened and brought to you thanks to the state, I am requesting you to please allow both attorneys to withdraw as I can't at this point proceed with them. I need new legal counsel and I need time to allow them to renew everything because I want to pursue all my options. I'm requesting a mistrial too. I also was told any deals that are made by the state to a witness have to be known. I want to know what was M. Soboniak offered for her three open cases for lying on the stand against me. None of this is sitting right with me. This county is wrong and I won't stop till to made right. They lied over and over. Nobody got to know Lynn and I. There was so much not allowed and it was my defense. That's not right. And how can they? Detectives lie and get away with it when their own discovery shows it. And I wouldn't, now that word's a little hard to read, something, I wouldn't have it if it wasn't for creditors who enclose their affidavits and subpoenas with the requested information. How can you legally be okay with this? Now that you know, you believe in the law, and they took the law in their own hands. I was never considered innocent, ever. My past record was all they saw. If you believe the law and that I had a fair trial, then you are no different from them. I <laughs> She's trying to like guilt, you know, trying to shame Judge Doro. If you do this, the condition is being set, you guys, then you're no different from them. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> she says, I pointed out some serious issues. <laughs> I pointed out some serious issues. Thank you for your time and consideration. Sincerely, Jesse Kurshevsky. Pro, pro se. Oh man, and it goes on, you guys. So Ben Phelan said, corrected, Huber or Huber is a specific name of a jail facility in Waukesha County. Okay, thank you for that as well. That's very helpful. At least we know then the word would be H-U-B-E-R, I guess, right? That's from a page earlier, if you're only joining now. Woody Deason says, thanks for your hard work, G. Oh, thank you so much. Um, Kat says, when was this letter written? It was written... It was written right before, days before her sentencing hearing. This says 12-3-2023. Each letter is dated like this. Um, so we went through the date on the top there earlier. We're on page 23. I don't want to lose my place now because I'm <laughs> trying to time my recording and the page we're on. 
Oh, but there's more. 12-3-2023. I would like to request transcripts for all of my hearings on this case so I can start renewing. Another issue, the medical examiner did all those tests but never tested the five pills in her stomach. Then they were discarded, but she saved the pill bottles. And she even tested the pill fragments but not pills in her stomach. Said that didn't matter or enter her blood. But that's not true if they are, I think that says something like nifedipine. They don't break down. You poop them out whole. They are extended tablets. At trial, it was said. Yes, she said poop in a letter. <laughs> yes, she do. Jessica, she has to go, will go to all lengths. And when she's like, you know what? She's one of those that never, she always has to have the last word, right? <laughs> and even though there's no one else talking, no one else, she's not receiving information. She's like, ah, ah, wait, one more thing. And also, ooh, but there's more. And it's like, okay. Right, Jesse, no one else is answering though. <laughs> and the contents would have been empty. None of it makes sense. They say the scene was staged, yet the pillow fragments were tested. All those were in her toxicology reports, in her body. Oh, and there's, there's even more. 12. More. 12-4-2023. Her sentencing hearing was on December 7th. So in all these days leading up to her sentencing, she's writing <laughs> all of this. Yeah. <laughs> now you guys are all saying poop. <laughs> That a bull spit this letter, right? Okay. L4, 2023. Judge Doro. There's just so much that I can't wrap my head around it all. I understand detectives can lie during interrogations, but what about interviews with non-suspects? <laughs> what about interviews with non-suspects? Can they lie then? <laughs> Jesse, you're the liar. You're the liar. The big liar. And fraudster. And now a convicted killer. Wow. Joe Mom says, Huber is a law in Wisconsin that allows inmates out to work. It's not a prison. Thank you so much, Joe Mom. So then we're back to uh, square one there, where it's hu it's probably Huber inmates, because she wrote H-U-B-R inmates. So it's probably Huber inmates, which are inmates that can work during their jail time, right? <laughs> Bean says, Kurshevsky flu has me dying, lol. I hope none of you get it. <laughs> when Detective Hoppy met with Scott Craig, his ex-wife Jackie and daughter Alex Craig all together, he told them, I confessed, he told them the Emmy said that she died from Visine poisoning. It was months prior to cause or manner of death ruled. He told them about my prior cases, said I was on probation for stealing from my grandma. I owe her restitution of over $35,000. I have no case with my grandma or owe her on state that from her. He told them, I'm a con woman. I think it says, or owe her or stole that from her. Not state, stole that from her. How does she know this? <laughs> then one of the detectives told his ex-wife, he told a friend who told this one. She's like, yeah, they told people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're just making stuff up now or what? And this is what I do. I steal from my family. If I'm honest, there was so much more. It went on and on. The interview started one way of not believing that I could do this. And by then, in the end, he turned all three against me with his lies. I'm sick of hearing I'm the liar. I did lie because Lynn was lying to me. But this case all involved lied. Right. She's like, you know what? I'm sick of being called the liar. You are the liar, la 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 liar. <laughs> Jesse is the biggest pathological liar I've ever seen. I am not diagnosing anyone, I'm speculating. Okay, I do not have credentials to diagnose anyone. I'm a lawyer or psychologist or anything. It's just, I've never seen someone lie like this before. My word, and she's like, you know what? I'm sick of being called the liar. I did lie, the next sentence. So she's sick of being called the liar. The very next sentence is, I did lie. Sick of being called a liar, but I did lie. Okay, and she says, cause Lynn was lying to me. But this case, all involved, lied. Okay. A witness, M. Saboriak, took the stand after she repeatedly asked for help. She will do whatever to avoid going to prison, she said. Which I think she's referring to that witness who was at the jail with Jesse for a time. And that she said that Jesse would brag about being able to 
forge documents and notarize things and all of that, remember? <laughs> Julie Bimi says, a legend in her own mind law, <laughs> right? Ed, ask any CEO who knows her. She was known as a problem. She hit on staff thinking they wanted her. She got completely naked in the sewing room by part three for a CEO when he passed by, then got him fired. But remember, she says she was thinking that everyone wanted her. But earlier, when I was saying that Jesse's like, they've got pictures of me in my shackles. They, they don't want that. <laughs> I can't speak for them. Maybe they do want that. How do I know? Oh, no. <laughs> what a sad, sad world that'll be if they want to see Jesse in cuffs. No, no, no. Get that image out of our heads. Yes. But <laughs> when they're like, she's accused, again, projecting, I think, that this woman that she's referring to is saying, yeah, she hit on staff thinking that they wanted her. She got completely naked in the sewing room. They have a sewing room in there <laughs> by part three for a CEO when he passed by and then got him fired. Okay. She was caught passing notes to CEOs. So what detective did she hit on or sleep with? And I'm dead serious. There it is. She said it again. And I'm dead serious. She might as well have said it. And I swear to God. Just like her other letter, the 39 page letter contained a letter that she wanted someone to write pretending to be a concerned citizen, if you remember that from last week, Friday, okay? And in that letter, <laughs> it was all the same talk of this. <laughs> it was exactly all of this of like, why, you know what, if Jessie's just a liar, that doesn't make her a killer. I mean, lying isn't murder. What, like, are you serious? <laughs> That's how she talked in that letter. But yet here, she is accusing everyone of lying, which she said in her own other letter, that's not so bad. That doesn't make someone a killer. And that's the point that I'd bring up to her. By you pointing out that everybody's a liar. Yeah, but you're the only killer in the room. You know, it's like a murder mystery. Which one? Who who done it? Yeah. Oh, Jesse Kershevsky. Okay. <laughs> wow. She kept talking to one that she saw when an inmate hit her that she said was cute and asked her out. She kept writing to see him saying that she had more information. Our jury was sealed. I now, now, remember, more evidence that Jesse Krzyzewski wrote the 39-page letter. In the 39-page letter, she said to her friend that she just can't believe any of this. This is all insane. And she wishes that she could get the jury's names so that she could reach out. And now here she is saying, our jury was sealed. <laughs> I'm asking now that the trial's over to unseal them. No, Jesse, no. She wants to reach. She literally is still... It's matching what she said in that other letter that she claimed she didn't write. She wants to reach out to the freaking jury. I am asking now that trial is over to unseal them. I strongly believe there was jury tampering and even more so because it's sealed. Juror number 20 was related to Daniel Radloft, a state's witness by marriage. It has since come to light that there was contact through a third party, one to obtain records, between the two as well as issues with juror number 28, who was removed, but was with the jurors until the deliberations and there were discussions among jurors prior. With a sealed jury, attorneys cannot reach out, and I feel this is all wrong. So now that they are done, I request an unseal at least to the parties, if not the public. Mm, at least to the parties, if not the public. And then she knows, maybe she'll call her mom if they were to release it to the public which they won't, but then say, hey, can you just check on that list and can you just get all their names and emails and numbers because we need to contact these people. Any of the jurors need to come back and say that actually they'd like to change their verdict. I mean, after all those deliberations, come on, Jesse, you were found guilty on all three charges. Wow. Yeah, Amy Short, who's Lynn's family member, the victim, right, said Lynn had her issues like all of us, but she absolutely did not kill her mom and she was not a liar. Hashtag justice for Lynn. So you guys, if you haven't yet, please like and share this episode. Hashtag justice for Lynn Hernan would be helpful. And hashtag justice, uh, hashtag Lynn Hernan, L-Y-N-N-H-E-R-N-A-N. -N. You can also um, hashtag Grizzly True Crime or Jesse Kershevsky. Unfortunately, it's being categorized that way on social media as well. So that people can find it and get this information. But yes, this is pure criminal victim blaming. We've never seen such victim blaming 
it's terrible. Um, I mean, many times, actually, in interrogations and things, we, we see killers, victim blame. But this is really terrible, what Jessie's doing here. Even going so far as to accuse the victim, the one she murdered, of murdering her own mom in the way that Jessie murdered Lynn. I mean, that is just, it's next level, I don't know what. I don't even know what to call it. Okay, so... I would also ask that the file the state gave you, e-filed, be sealed, since the trial was over and this should not have been sent to you. It could have been stopped or... <laughs> she wants the 39-page letter sealed. Too late, Jesse Krzyzewski. It's on YouTube now. You can find it exclusively on Grizzly True Crime. <laughs> I do think... Oh, I put out a presentation also on X. Yeah, my handle's at True Crime Gizzler. You can find it there as well. It's not sealed. There were letters out there, so is this one. Or argued, or had a hearing, or even requested to be sealed. But it was done without a conversation with Attorney Galavis. Knowledge and Attorney Kuchler had requested withdrawal and stopped working on the case. This whole situation was handled improper, hence part of request of a mistrial. Okay, everybody. Take a drink of grapefruit juice every time she says mistrial. <laughs> She's like, that's right, I rest my case. I have called for a mistrial at least four or five times and uh, mistrial. So she's gone for every angle she possibly thinks she can, pretending she's a lawyer. Like the jurors had a problem and the attorneys lied and this is a setup. And then people knew about the verdict two hours before. And then they got, they committed perjury. They got information wrong. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> All of that. Sure. And there's more. 12, 6, 2023. The day Today, before. Today, Attorney Galavis. This was the day before the sentencing hearing. He came to see me since he hasn't heard any more about tomorrow. He was going to submit the few character letters that he got on my behalf. The other half is in limbo because they never got a reply from Donna, attorney Kuchler. She was working a sentencing packet and stopped working on it. I am requesting to pause my sentencing hearing because due to issues from trial, I want to get legal representation and put in for a mistrial before I am sentenced. I would do it myself if I could. And if I could get the copies from my discovery computer drive, but I can't. There's so much going on right now that I am at a huge loss on what to do. What I legally can do. My rights on how to proceed. And I have no help from my two attorneys on record. Sincerely, Jesse Kroshevsky. So this was written on December 3rd of 2023. And Jesse Kroshevsky's sentencing hearing was on December 7th of 2023. So you can see that that's what the court stamp says as well. Okay, so let's start. That was well-timed. <laughs> I put my own recording on a loop there. And I'm like, oh, we're going to go through it one more time. Round two, everyone. No, I'm just kidding. We, then we're going to get Kroshevsky flu and you don't want it. It's worse than any flu I've ever had. <laughs> it's too toxic, <laughs> the Kroshevsky flu. So we made it through this letter. 25 pages written from December 3rd, 3rd and 4th and 6th and then her sentencing hearing was on December 7th and then it was decided that yes okay the attorneys are able to withdraw the judge granted the motions to withdraw and her sentencing has been majorly delayed there will be a case management hearing on January 12th of 2024. Now if you thought that's all I have for you today there's more. <laughs> Here is in fact i think this is from the waukesha county jail is from the like online system right and so <laughs> i just highlighted a couple of little notes that jesse kroshevsky made so this one is from the 5th of december 23 and she writes here reply to whoever answered lt cap okay describe the nature of your quest Am I allowed to have my discovery picked up by someone other than an attorney since i don't have one i can't wait to get it back until I have one. That is fine, but I should be allowed to release it to anyone. If so, then that's great and I'm fine. Please advise. Also, I have no issue using my money for calls. I'm not asking otherwise, but this jail show have some kind of legal directory phone book, something to look up attorneys. She's like, please, I need to find my own attorneys. Like, just relax, Jesse. You're going to get your own new public defenders, you know? <laughs> anyway, so moving on here. This was written on the 14th of... October 2023 and in it here she says her trial starts October 23rd so 
same behavior. She seems to panic right before something important is happening in court and she wants to control the whole damn thing. Okay. And so here she was again, requesting discovery and things like that. She wants the thumb drive to get to her attorney. So she's like trying to manage, like she's micromanaging. That's the word I'm looking for. Now here on the 16th of October, because this trial was starting on October 23rd. Okay. So on the 16th of October, wait, we got to go a little bit down. Yeah, this one. <laughs> the, this is from 10, 13, 23. Okay. So the day before, the day before her trial started, <laughs> she said, I asked what I could or couldn't bring to court holding during my five week trial. I was told paperwork, pen and Bible only. I want to see if I could have chapstick, lotion, pick or comb. I could have and leave separate ones that stay in court, holding the full length of the trial and not come back to the pod daily. I also want to see if I can bring a snack. <laughs> Her actually writing this, this got me. I was like, oh man. She's like, could I bring some chapstick and lotion and maybe like a comb for my hair? But then also, can I bring a snack? Chips, candy, granola bar. So obviously she meant granola bar. Chips, candy, granola bar and drink. Bottle, water, soda from canteen for lunch breaks daily. And I will eat there too and not bring back to the pod since I will be done there all day for weeks. I get the biggest issue is bringing things back and forth. And being searched so I can eliminate that and have separate to keep there or bring and eat and not bring back to pot daily. Please advise. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, and for the discovery pickup, she probably wants her freaking mother's grubby little paws to pick it up, right? And I mean, I think her mother may be <laughs> investigated. She may be being investigated for other things, you know? I don't know if Jesse helped if she helped Jesse ever to sign things, to commit fraud, who knows. And I wouldn't be surprised if the letter got out of the jail with either her mom or her mom's friend. Remember the guy on the stand that lied so much? Oh, man. <laughs> Stefan says, you have to be prepared, right? I mean, <laughs> can she just, she's going to have paperwork, pen, okay, Bible, but then also chapstick, lotion, a pickle comb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then also a snack. <laughs> Chips, candy, granola bar, and a drink. She wants her snackies and her drinks. Can she take a lunchbox? Okay, thank you. Like, wow. Wow, Jesse. I think that was some of the two most interesting ones. I just want to see if I highlighted anything else. The rest is truly boring. It's just asking for the USB over and over for discovery and things like that. This one was from the 17th. So after a trial started, I talked to you and you were going to talk to the property person. I sent a discovery request on the 12th and just heard back on the 17th. The only saving grace is pod three CEOs got my discovery after talking to a lieutenant on the 13th and let it stay up here to today. I've been on it all day, nonstop for days again. Oh, I have trial next week on the 23rd. Then I also asked how to handle between now and then. So have a daily and during trial. I can't drop a request and wait days. Plus I need it during the trial. So days I come back. I need to look up something I talked about. Yeah, look up something talked about in court. By the time I'm back daily, the property person will be gone. She told me today I have to drop a request daily. And even now, two of us are viewing our discovery. Mm -hmm. Which two? Which two, right? <laughs> two of us are viewing our discovery. So waiting till afternoon to get them isn't working either. I'm asking, can I sign something to have it say at the pod three desk or keep it in my second lock property box? That's just for discovery until my trial's over. My trial is too important to deal with <laughs> these issues right now. I'm asking for something better here, or I will talk to my attorney and or the judge again. Okay, um, it's not a hotel, Jesse. It's not a hotel. Here again, she writes, I'm stuck in limbo. If you look here, same language. Either way, I can't wait because it could take time to find a new attorney. So I'm stuck in limbo. She uses that sentence in both the 39 page letter and the 25 page letter. So hello. If that's on a bust, I don't know what is. <laughs> right. Leslie Curtis said it's not an appeal because she hasn't been sentenced yet. This is just wasting the court's time. Exactly. Right. Um, purple guy. Yes, it's on Patreon, especially this letter. This letter is on Patreon and there's actually a stream where it wasn't interrupted. I read through the first letter, the 39 page one, twice. Second time had all sorts of commentary. 
the first time was just straight through. That's available on the playlist. This audio recording that we heard today is on Patreon, if you want to have that. So all the patrons got to hear it first this morning. <laughs> As I had uploaded it there, I'm like, guys, just listen to this, like round one. Here we go. And if you did listen to it, thank you so much for being here for round two. Oh, my goodness. So this is um, the 3rd of December, so four days before her sentencing hearing. To Judge Doro, case number 2021 CF885 versus Jesse Krzyzewski regarding hearing on December 7th, requesting an emergency hearing prior. Then she says, I have a letter for you that you need to read, but due to what's going on, I do not trust anyone and will not send it. Major issues. <laughs> and then they say forwarded. She's like, excuse me, emergency. My letter's gotten out and Grizzly to Crime is busy reading it. <laughs> oh no. Ah, I don't mean to laugh, but it's actually very funny. Like, oh my word, this criminal is so dumb. Jesse Krzyzewski, wow. This was on the 7th. This was for the sentencing hearing. She said, this is extremely time sensitive. I'm currently looking for attorneys. As of now, I'm without. I need to get copies of some of my electronic discovery. And I asked yesterday, a lieutenant or captain. They said they can't. What am I to do without an attorney? I need some things to send to the judge with my letter for court. And I need some for my family to take to speak with new potential attorneys. Ah, your mom, huh? Careful now. I can pay for copies, but I'm not sure how, how to, <laughs> how to handle this. And if I still can't get copies here, then I need permission to release my discovery drive. I was told I only could to an attorney, but I don't have one. And I need things off <laughs> there to show. So I'm asking if I can't get copies here to be able to have it picked up by someone. Get copies made and brought back? Question mark. There's all. There has to be a way to handle this somehow without an attorney. I can't just sit and wait. I need in order to show potential attorneys. <laughs> so this gives me joy because she's freaking out that her attorneys quit on her. She's freaking out here. She's just like, what? What? I don't have an attorney. Who am I gonna call? Who am I gonna bug twenty four seven? Who will I control and manipulate next? <laughs> so she says. So I'm reaching out to you both. I also need a phone book. So look up potential attorneys and make phone calls since I need to speak to them too. I went through this a long time ago and had issues trying to obtain one. I can't expect my family to do everything and I can't sit and wait. I'm in legal limbo. Again, the limbo. And don't know my rights and need to speak with attorneys, please and thank you. <laughs> Amy Lee says, what if she starts contacting you? Oh no, <laughs> she's going to get a snarkastic response. <laughs> Dear Jesse, stand up. Deep breath. Now walk to the mirror. Walk to the mirror. Look into it <laughs> and say the following. She'll be like, wait, what? <laughs> what am I even saying? What is going on here? So, yes. And here they respond, redacted staff name. You were already told how to go about getting copies. If you send out your discovery, it cannot come back unless an attorney drops you off new discovery. We do not have a yellow pages for you. <laughs> uh, I like the, the undertone of snark there. <laughs> this person... At the jail, they're like, mm -mm, no, we've had enough of this one. So they say, your officer may be able to assist you in looking up numbers on the computer. You would have to use your own money for the phone calls. This is not something we can assist you with. We cannot give you special treatment. <laughs> Don't you just hear? I feel like this lady's name will be like Brenda. Don't worry, Brenda. It's going to be okay. She, Brenda's like, I've had enough of Jesse Krzyzewski. <laughs> Don't worry, lady. We've got your back. <laughs> Hope you don't get Krzyzewski flu. Oh, man. So, yeah, this is 26 pages of all this crap as well that Jesse's busy with. They're keeping the jail very busy. She said, yeah, another attorney. I'm lost as of what to do on my rights. I can't type enough on here. I can't get, co <laughs> I can't get copies. File a motion. Do a thing. Oh, now she's ordering people and says, Judge Doro, I don't know what I am to do. Removed so I can legally speak to you. They say, yeah, it's forwarded to the courts. The release of properties outside of the scope of our policy. You may take the discovery to prison with you. I identify someone to pick it up if you are sent <laughs> to the prison. Oh, man. This is so hectic. Mindy says, always a vibe here. <laughs> Appreciate you, G, Mods, and chat. Thank you so much. Yeah, Marilys. <laughs> that lady's like, we don't have a phone book. <laughs> Jesse's like, can I see a yellow pages or something? I need to start calling people. Yeah, she said, come and see me today. It's urgent. Look at Jesse here. She writes on the 5th of December. Okay, request info, facility deadline. There's a deadline. 
details of request, state public defender's office. I'm in legal limbo and I need to know my legal rights. I'm trying to see if someone could please come and see me today. It's urgent. Visine case attorneys withdrawing. No one else called it the Visine case. The I dropped murder trial, I dropped murder trial, or the Jesse Kraszewski trial. Only she's calling it the Visine case. Visine case attorneys withdrawing. No counsel. Need to know rights right now. I can't wait. And they're like, eh, okay, we, we are, we've forwarded that, that to the court. Thank you. And it says here, yeah, withdrawal. They aren't doing anything for me. I need legal advice. I need to, you can see, she's really freaking out. She's really freaking out. There's a lot of notes she made here on the system, right? <laughs> she even changes her language up a bit. It escalates. We'll see it in a moment. LAB from Tennessee says, can you work your magic and get Judge Doro on for an interview? Psh, wishful thinking. I mean, I wish I could. I always just invite them. I always just put out an open invitation. If any district attorney or judge wants to talk to me, they can. And usually then they contact me if they are comfortable, okay? Me and my anxiety, that's the best I can do as well. <laughs> Just like, hey, would you maybe like to? Oh, not. Okay, cool. <laughs> Moving on. I get so anxious doing interviews and stuff. But anyway, if they reach out, maybe. But definitely not before this uh, Krashevsky is sentenced and this case is like finally justice served, which could take many months from now, okay? So yeah, look what Jesse writes here. We're almost done, okay? She said... I have a USB drive in my property that has my revocation discovery that I was revoked for this current case and situation that I got my old attorney while in prison. I came here from prison TCI. Now I am without any attorney and I'm looking for certain information to speak to potential attorneys about and want to see what's all on that thumb drive. But I was told from property that per policy I can't get discovery from another facility. Legal discovery on a thumb drive when I came from prison not the streets. <laughs> She's like, excuse me, I'm a career criminal. Can I please just get this? <laughs> she says, I guess I'm not understanding this exactly. I need to find out. I'm in the middle of a shit storm and I have no legal representation. And now I can't even look at my legal discovery because I didn't get it here. I've been locked up for four and a half years and I started here on 7-9-2019 and have not been in the public since I have been Passed around institutions since. Oh, passed around. You mean you've continued to commit crimes? <laughs> she said, I was also able to look at the thumb drive when I first got here too. So why would that be different now? I'm asking to look at it. I'm not understanding how I can be denied legal discovery. And they answer, per admin, we do not allow drives to be used from other facilities. If you used it in the past, this was wrong. <laughs> Oh, my word. And then lastly, we are on page 25 or 26 here. She says, I need to get my revocation discovery that I came from prison with it's in my regular property on a thumb USB. I forgot about this, but I was revoked for all this current and need to see what's on there since I'm looking for certain things. Now, this was on the 7th. This was on that sentencing hearing day. OK, I also need to get my regular electronic discovery drive, too. Thank you. And the details are, you cannot have a drive from another facility per our policy. I will deliver your other ones today. <laughs> JC Kraszewski submitted new two questions. <laughs> Shame. This jail, <laughs> she's exhausting them. Last page says on the 6th of December, I need some items printed off my discovery drive to show you something and no attorney's working on my case. So what do I do? <laughs> and that's for Judge Doro. And they say, forwarded, this is from <laughs> open to close, forwarded to Judge Doro. Shame. Oh, man. So, yes, everyone. Oh, I just took myself <laughs> off the screen instead of this. Okay, so we've made our way through Jesse Krzyzewski's latest letter. I say latest because I fully believe that the first 39-page letter was also written by her. Did anyone else contribute to it? Maybe, I don't know. But I think she wrote it. And now, there she is again. Oh, with her 25-page thing. Piece of crap. <laughs> I just really want to show you something here. Just hold on one second. In case you haven't seen it. Just look, look at this attitude she's got here. Okay. So, this is my channel here. Just hold on one second. I've got to move myself over. Okay. If you guys haven't yet seen this... Uh, this one, sure, with Stephanie Lazarus. Oh, my word. We looked at that interrogation yesterday. It also got a little bit snarky. Okay, so let's go to the shorts section and find little Miss Kraszewski here. Look at this. Are you ready? Look at this attitude here. Okay, look at this. 
I do say, no, I did not write it. There's cameras all over this jail. There's recorded phone calls. There's a lot of issues here that, no, everything should be stopped. And I, I, I need to look at my legal rights because I don't know what they are at this point. I can Moving tell forward, you. No, I do not think nope. because of everything that I have since learned, no, I should not have either attorney, which is very hard, proceed at this point and sentencing should be stopped today. I. <laughs> so there's that one. Look at this one. I do say, no, I did not write it. There's cameras all over this jail. There's recorded phone calls. There's a lot of issues here that, no, everything should be stopped. And I, I, I need to look at my legal rights because I don't know what they are at this point. I can Moving tell forward, you. No, I do not think because of everything that. That's a similar one. Wait, and then this one. I did. I do not because up until yesterday, neither one has done anything for me now because they had halted all proceedings due to the DA conversation they have had. So at this point, as much as I wanted to get out of Waukesha County and proceed forward and go through appeals, I don't because nothing has been done for sentencing except last minute yesterday. Um, partial. I have letters of character in limbo. I have nothing limbo. completed for sentencing. So no, I don't. And I frankly blame the state for that. They proceeded to release this information, which should have not been done. And it has created this mess. So why they are requesting they should not withdraw on their behalf. She also says I don't withdrawal. think this is right. I she says withdrawal. Not that they withdrew or they are withdrawing. She's like, they've requested withdrawal. Well, in that context, it made sense. <laughs> Remember the letter. So yes, there's quite a few of them. There's quite a few of them. There's one more here. No, I don't think either one of them feel comfortable staying on. So I would prefer not to at this point because of the conversation or lack little of conversation I've had with both of them. I would prefer not to, no. Do you understand that could be a significant delay? Unfortunately, yes, I do. And that, that is more upsetting and that is on the state at this point. They released <laughs> this information. They made this mess. No, you did by they writing a letter. <laughs> but themselves right now. No, that's you. And it, it is very frustrating. It is very frustrating. And I was told walking out of the detective's office last week, just so you know, you probably will not be leaving anytime soon because of this, knowing I wanted to leave. I have not told them I did not write these letters. So again, that is coming from what? My phone calls? My conversation? Right, I, I did not. No, I don't think either one of them feel comfortable. Did she just say, I did not tell them that I... I did not tell them that I did not write this letter. Uh, okay, she's like, where's that coming from? My phone calls. They're listening. <laughs> she's like, they're listening to my phone calls now. Yeah, literally always. They always were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jail calls. <laughs> they are recorded. As we can hear the Adelson calls now. Have you guys been listening to that? Oh my word. I've been listening on Pretty Lies and Alibis with Gigi. She got all the jail calls in. Whoa. <laughs> That's for uh, the Dan Markell case, right? I'm talking about Charlie Adelson, his mother Donna, and we've been looking at that case as well, slowly but surely. Oh my word. Wow. So yeah, yes, Jesse, that would be the next thing is to hear those jail calls. Imagine it. I don't, I don't think I'm up for it, man. I don't think I have the energy <laughs> for Jesse and more of her crap. What? So, wow. Okay. Caroline says, is it easier to list the attorneys who Jesse has not fired? Yeah, I think that would be easier. <laughs> She's working through them all in Waukesha County. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Rosebud says, Judge Dora really discusses a case with the media. She really takes her job serious. I actually don't know if judges, I don't know if judges, do judges do interviews? I mean, I've spoken to district attorneys. In almost every trial that I've covered, I've gotten an email from the district attorney, which was so nice, so unexpected. They're so sweet. And then I interviewed uh, quite a few of them. Yes. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. So, yeah. Also, I don't know if, um, what's her name? Abby. One of the prosecutors. She wasn't in the courtroom at that sentencing hearing, was she? I looked again and I'm like, where was she? She's probably like, Kroshevsky flew out. Like, I can't anymore with this woman. <laughs> oh, Jesse is so exhausting. We thought Sarah Boone was exhausting. Jesse is beyond exhausting. So yeah, Betty B says there's no attorneys left. So again, thank you so much to Grizzly Cat for getting that letter for us. I mean, yeah, Grizzly Cat spent almost two hours on the phone with a court clerk. Shout out to Colleen, the court clerk, <laughs> who's very sweet, um, in order to get these letters for us and this this that we just read. So I hope that you enjoyed it. I mean, it's a terrible, 
it's a very sad case and we want justice for Lynn Hernan. It's a very grim topic and it's just frustrating that Jesse Krzyzewski actually managed to manipulate her way around whatever. I don't know if this is the outcome she foresaw. I don't know what she thought was going to happen. But um, she, I mean, <laughs> she just delayed her sentencing. That's all she's done. She's going to be sitting there in the Waukesha County Jail and be like, what, 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 freaking out? Putting, you know, new attorneys on the case and then they'll have to get ready for sentencing. That's what they will be there to be her counsel for sentencing. So all this has done is delay when justice will be served. You know? So, yeah, Abby Nikolai says, uh, Stefan, exactly. Yes, okay. Oh, Cat's Gallery said Judge Newman did an interview with a TV show. Yeah, with a TV show? I don't know, with YouTubers. With a TV show, perhaps. And has he not retired? Or he's going to, right? Anyway, so thank you so much all for being here with me. I still have lots of work to do. I want to you know, make some more videos for you and things like that. So if you want to hear this audio uninterrupted, it's on Patreon. Patreon's a dollar a month. Um, at the lowest tier, all tiers get the same, except for a bit of loyalty merch. I don't know if you knew about that, but there's loyalty merch that goes out, <laughs> which you only get on Patreon. I can't even get it. I can't get it. Only the patrons get it. They're so lucky. <laughs> so if you want to go over there and just listen to the audio uh, without interruptions for this letter, that's on Patreon. And there is a version of the 39-page letter that was uninterrupted as well, which was right, it was the sentencing hearing stream. I first, for one hour, read through the 39-page letter without interruptions. So if you want to see that there, it is available on the playlist. If you don't know anything about this case, check out the playlist. And if you missed some of the streams from this week, I hope that you'll check it out as well. There was a stalker case, Dr. Amy Harwick, that I summarized for you in the video section. There's YouTube shorts I've been making on this channel and my second channel. And then today we looked at the 25-page letter from Jesse Koshevsky. We've looked at Stephanie Lazarus and the possibility that she might actually get out on parole. I mean, I hope not, but who knows what 2024 will bring. Charlie Adelson sentencing. We looked at that this week as well. It's been a busy one. It's been a busy one. So I hope that you have a wonderful Friday evening. Members, we will have a stream this weekend sometime. So make sure that you have all your notifications on as well. You should get it. You should check the community tab as well. And if you are on Patreon too, you will get um, notified of anything coming up on the channel this weekend. Okay, everyone. I wish you a wonderful Friday afternoon or evening. Maybe it's Saturday morning for some already. Who knows? Stefan says, say hello to Willow and Fury G. Uh, Will, they are banned from the office. They are so naughty in this office, especially together. They just walk all over the cables and things. So now they are banned from the office. And I'm going to go and see them all now. <laughs> So thank you so much. Leah says, you're amazing. I'll never be tired of saying it. I really appreciate it. Thank you, mods. See you all in the next one. And don't you go get Krzyzewski flu now, okay? Just go for a walk, get some fresh air, drink some grapefruit juice, and you'll be okay. <laughs> okay, bye, everyone.